In this video, we're going to go over the basics of data modeling. Data modeling is a powerful feature in Status Enterprise that lets you create a logical model of your data structure. This model can then be easily consumed by your HMI screens for display. So let's start off by asking the question, what is a data model? If you look at your mobile phone contact list, you'll have a list of your friends and your family, with each one defined as a contact. These contacts have a bunch of information like names, phone numbers, and sometimes their address in a picture. This list of contacts is a representation or a model of a group of people you interact with. So if we think about how these contacts are defined, we can then apply that thought process to our data model as well. The contact is a type that has properties like name and phone number, while each person listed is an asset in our model. So what makes data modeling so beneficial to your HMI solution? Data modeling allows you to become much more efficient with your data since you're not binding directly to your process hardware. Instead, you're binding to a logical representation of your data. This allows you to not only organize everything in a way that works best for your company, but it also allows you to have much more control over how the data is being used. There are many more benefits of using a data model as well. To learn more about how a data model can benefit you, please see our website at www.scada.com slash software slash status enterprise edition under the data modeling section. There's also a great white paper we've written called Do You Data Model listed under the resources section of this URL as well. I'm going to open the model designer and connect to the enterprise server now. By default, you'll be connecting to the local instance of enterprise running on your computer. The default credentials to log in are administrator and no password, so I'll click the connect button and wait for it to log in. We're now looking at the clean model that gets created when you install Status Enterprise. This is where we're going to be creating all of our types, properties, and assets. Now let's create a scenario where we have a boiler tank we need to monitor. The first thing we'll need is an equipment type. This will hold all of the various pieces of equipment we would need to create in our model. To create this, I'm going to click on the Add Root Type button in the top left corner in the Type section. Next. I'll give this type the name Equipment and click OK. Now that we have our base equipment type, we need to determine if there's any properties that we need to add to this. Any property that we add needs to be generic enough to be used in many places, like an asset tag for example. An asset tag would be a unique ID for each piece of equipment. This could be the model number or some other naming convention you've defined. Let's add this property to the equipment type now. I'm going to click the Add Property button and then use String as the data type for this property. I'll then name this property Asset Tag and click OK. Now, any type that's created as a child of this base will automatically receive this property when it's created. Next, we need to create a boiler tank as a subtype of our equipment type. To do this, I'll click on the Add Subtype button. Next, I'll give this type a name of Boiler Tank and click OK. Now that we have our Boiler Tank type, the next thing we need to do is to figure out what properties we need to see on this tank. We've already got our Asset Tag property, so we don't need to worry about that one anymore but we'll still need a temperature and a PSI property so we can monitor the overall health of the tank. Let's add these properties to our type now. To do this, I'm going to click on the Add Property button, then select Double as my data type and click OK. I'll then call this property Temperature. Next, I'll add my second property by clicking the Add Property button and also choosing Double as the data type. I'll call this property PSI and click OK. Now we can set the default values and ranges for these properties. The default value acts like a sample piece of data. It will give you an initial value if requested. The range allows you to set thresholds for what's considered a normal value. For example, if this temperature on the boiler tank should be between 200 and 300 degrees, I can then set 200 as the low and 300 as the high, and if for any reason the temperature value crosses either of them, I'll then know that something's wrong with my process. 
Now I'll set the default value for the asset tag. I'll enter tank 001 as the default value. Next, I'll set the PSI default value to 150. I'll set the low to 115. And I'll set the high to 175. For the temperature, I'll set the default value to 260. Then I'll set the low to 200 and the high to 300. Now we can begin creating assets. To do this, I'll click on the Assets tab. You'll see that there's a view called Assets created for you already, so I'm going to select it and then click the Create Asset button. Next, I'll select my type, ensuring that I have the asset view selected. I'll find Boiler Tank and click OK. I'll give this a name of Boiler Tank 001, then click OK to add it to my view. I'll expand my view and see that my asset's been added successfully, so I'm going to add another one, also using the boiler tank we created. I'll call this boiler tank 002 and click OK to add it to our view. Now I'll update the asset tag on the second asset we created so that the name is more accurate. And now that we have our assets, our model is functional and ready to be used. In closing, Status Enterprise is a powerful, easy-to-use tool that lets you design once and deploy multiple times. For more information about Status Enterprise and data modeling, please visit us on the web at www.scada.com.